What's up everybody and welcome back to the Ride and Die channel or welcome either way very glad to have you. We're going to be comparing and contrasting two very popular very amazing seats by the Saddleman company. On my right your left we have the Saddleman step up which I have customized with white lattice stitch all around and on my left your right we have the SDC San Diego Customs Saddleman Pro step up seat. So let's roll that intro, we'll get back here, and I'll explain what the differences are and which one I think you should spend your money on. Alrighty, so for those of you who do not know, this is the Saddleman Step Up. Uh, like I said, I have customized it with the white lattice stitch. I will say in my initial install video, which by the way, this is not an install video. Uh, I have an install video. I'll link it right up here for the Saddleman step up when I put it in and kind of my thoughts and everything unboxing. Uh, this is going to be the exact same way to install it and all that stuff. So as far as that goes, check this video out that I have linked up there for the install video if you're curious about that and the difference uh, you know, from the stock um, seat on the Lowrider S. So... This, uh, I will also say that the white stitching on this, I've had a bunch of people in my initial video, oh, that white stitching is going to be black in a couple months or whatever. Well, I have just over 2,000 miles on this seat. It's like about 22, 23-ish, 100 miles, maybe, honestly, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, it's been out in the rain. I've washed it. I've worn black. I've worn blue, different colored pants, different colored jeans. Uh, this white stitching is still just as white as the day I got it. You can see nobody sits on my passenger side or even on the sides, and that white is exactly the same as the front. So no issues as far as the white fading. So there you go. That myth is busted right there. All right. So the Saddleman Step Up, I'm going to put the price up of both of these. Uh, I'll put them up on list right now because the SDC Pro Seat is a little bit extra money. So you might be saying, why am I going to spend that extra money? This is stupid, whatever. We're going to get to that in a second. Um, before that, I want to say this seat is very comfortable. People have said, oh, you can't last more than a couple hours on it or whatever. When I took my Tail of the Dragon trip with my buddy and his family, uh, Motos and Mullets, I was on the seat for 9 to 10 hours a day. I mean, we took just breaks for food and gas stations and stuff like that. No problem with my butt at all. If anything, my shoulders were just kind of getting a little sore from the position I was on the bike. But that is a different story for a different time because I have switched some stuff on the bike. But anyway, a uh, really good seat. So the big difference, which you could probably tell, is not only is the SDC seat uh, curved instead of a flat 90 degree like the step up, the regular Saddleman step up, but it's also got a backrest. All right, in addition to the stuff that you can see, um, I will say in its stock form, this comes in all black, lattice stitched with no gel on the passenger and gel on the front, the regular partition. The SDC Pro Seat also does not come with gel on top, comes with gel over here, but they also come with, it's a Pro Seat. So according to Salomon's website, the Pro Seats have a dual density foam. They have a thick foam and a thin foam, or um, a high density and a low density foam, which ultimately leads to a little bit more comfort, according to the website, and the regular step up does not have that. So obviously, you will see this backrest, which we will talk about more in a few seconds, but it is important to note that when you buy this seat, you can configure it with different stitching color options, just like uh, the regular settlement. However, I have not found a website that allows you to customize the different materials. You know, some websites will have, you can have like an all white seat, an all brown, all red, all green, whatever. Uh, the SDC Pro does not have it. As it ships, you get this little SDC, there's logos on both sides, and you get this little Velcro patch up here that is a hole for your backrest. So you can run it without a backrest. Um, it does come with a gripper material on not only the passenger pillion, but also the backrest. There's the gripper material, and also the gripper is on the actual removable backrest, you know, that's removable and adjustable. Um, and then the rest of the actual seat material is carbon fiber, all black stitching. Like I said, you can customize directly from the Salomon website the stitching colors. I did not, and the uh, Saddleman logo, I did not choose to do that. Uh, I went ahead and got it uh, at a very cheap price from Get Lowered Cycles. I had doing that stuff, but uh, in the all black configuration, it looks really, really cool, especially on an all black bike. Looks a lot less boring than I thought it would. Uh, very sleek. So, yes, 
the seat, as you could probably tell, I'm gonna put a lot of pictures up, uh, you know, towards the end, sitting side by side as best as I could. But the biggest difference is this kind of sloping instead of 90 degree backrest. And also, it's a little bit thicker, you could probably tell. Um, as far as the uh, the padding goes and everything, and it pushes you a little bit closer just in its stock configuration. Now, as far as this backrest goes, you can take the Velcro pad off, you can take the backrest, and it comes with this. There's three adjustable parts, so you can put it all the way down, or you can have it in the adjusting spots, and if you do choose to have it in one of the spots that, you know, the adjustable spots, there is this little kind of pin that sits in there at these different spots to make sure when you're putting pressure on it, it doesn't sink back down. That is a fail safe kind of for it. So I'm gonna show you without, it doesn't lock necessarily, but it does have these little joints. So all the way down, that is it. You can already see you're getting a little bit farther. And then you have the first click, again, a little bit farther. The second, again, even farther. And then there you go with the third. So you can see you're gonna have at least about, what is that, two and a half-ish, two inches um, of further forwardness than you would just running the seat normal, in addition to it being higher up on your lower back. Uh, I have only ridden maybe about 40 to 50 miles with this seat, and obviously I have not done the break-in period of you know right around like a thousand miles to break in the foam and the gel and everything to make it even more comfortable, and I can tell you without a doubt that the foam, the dual density in this pro seat is uh, a decent amount more comfortable. And like I said, I never had an issue with this step up to begin with, but this dual density foam is even better, even more comfortable than the original step up. And especially for shorter guys like myself, having this backrest be able to push you even more forward, especially if you are not running any kind of fairing like I am not, and you have the wind hit you at higher speeds, between this being higher up on your lower back and pushing you further forward, uh, it is just an absolute game changer. This keeps you so planted in the bike. It is so nice, it is so comfortable. It takes a lot of the stress out of your shoulders when you're going higher speeds without a fairing or even with the fairing, depending on what you got. Uh, it just takes that having to pull yourself up completely out of the out of the equation because you have this backrest pushing you even farther forward. So right now I'm gonna show you what they look like on the bike with me sitting on it. I have loafers on because this is a chill Monday off with me and my boy and my my daughter, uh, my girl, that sounds like a girlfriend, so my boy and my daughter, uh, my children, we're just doing some errands and stuff. I'm not putting on socks, I'm going sockless, we got the loafers on. So I'm gonna show you what I look like on this bike with just the step up, then I'm gonna show you with this, and then I'm gonna show you with the backrest all the way out. Uh, you can use your imagination for the in-betweens or whatever. So. At the very end of it, I'm gonna show a picture exactly of the same place. I'm gonna have my camera up on a mount and it'll have both seats back to back so you can see exactly where the line changes are on the bike, you know, from, from seat to seat. So, all right, let's go put them on the bike. All right, so as you guys can see, the seat pushes you way far forward and there's not even nearly enough uh, space on your back to be able to fold yourself and throw yourself way back like you would if there was a lot of wind pushing on you. Uh, this backrest 
is amazing. Uh, even if you're one of those guys that doesn't like the look of it or you prefer like when you're going around turns and really throwing it around canyons and stuff like that. Uh, if you're one of the people that really doesn't like the backrest, but you also like to be able to go long distance on your bike and not have super fatigue, put the backrest on and then take it off when you get to wherever you're going because this is going to save you so much fatigue in the long run. It is an amazing seat. In addition to, I don't know if I said it before, but just the seat in general, I don't know if it's a, you know, the design of the backrest or the dual density foam, putting a little bit more uh, foam and, you know, material in between you and the bike, but the seat in general feels like it pushes you um, just slightly, just slightly more forward and more, you know, on the bike versus like sitting way into it. And that's not a bad thing at all because you still feel planted in the bike with the design of it. So I don't want you to think that it's like, oh, you're sitting on top of the bike versus in it. No, that's, you know, they both have that planted one with the bike feeling. It's just that this makes you feel like you're a little, maybe more agile, just more different center of gravity, whatever it is, it is a better feel in my opinion, one that makes you more comfortable towards the bars. Now, if you are somebody that has had zero back issues, zero fatigue issues, has gone eight, 900 miles at a time without stopping, you know, besides gas and food and stuff like that, and you're somebody who's not very short to begin with, then the step up is gonna be fine for you. It's a tried and true, everybody has had it a million, a million miles worth of you know people riding on that seat but for people that are short especially people that want the extra comfort this pro seat is amazing a hundred percent would recommend it i wish if this was out i never even heard about it and knew it was a thing when i got my step up a little over a year ago but i do not believe this was out then i think this is a somewhat new somewhere within the last half a year ish i believe correct me if i'm wrong please but anyway this seat is awesome, 10 out of 10, well worth the money. I am very excited to put more miles on it. Uh, and then of course my channel has a whole playlist devoted to my Lowrider S as far as the build series and everything. My next video is gonna be talking about the new handlebar modification I did. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It's a new riser uh, and I gotta be doing some brake line stuff as well. So yeah. Uh, check out all of that stuff. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel so you never miss a video. Turn on post notifications so you get notified every time I post a new video. Make sure to watch one of the videos that are on the screen right now. Check out my Instagram. Send me a DM. Let me know you are here from YouTube. And I will see you on the next one, guys. Ride safe. Have fun. Dad out.